Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ion TV's new show, Being Muslim, hosted by me, Oli Noor. Um, on Being Muslim, we'll have guests with us every week from different professional and academic backgrounds to speak about how uh, their job and how their careers relate to the Islamic faith. Today, uh, we'll be talking about a subject that is very uh, much relative to everyone. Um, it will hit us whether we expect it or not, and it is related to the subject of death. And we'll be speaking specifically about funeral arrangements, inshallah, as it is something that uh, we must all be aware of for the inevitable whether, when it happens within our own uh, friends and family. So today we have with us our guest, uh, Kafil Ahmed, who is a funeral director, has been a funeral director for almost 20 years. And, uh, you know, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh wa so I just did a brief little introduction, um, and uh, as I mentioned, you've been a funeral director for over 20 years. Can you yes. give us a little bit more information about uh, what is it that you do? Uh, basically, uh, like you mentioned about the death, death mm. is going to happen to everybody. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me mm. in being Muslim uh, program. I uh, appreciate that and uh, thank you to your management who invited us and organized this uh, program today. Mm. Uh, talking about the funeral, uh, obviously that is something that we have to uh, remember. Mm. It, it's, it's going to happen to everyone. Yes. It's like, you know, Allah says, so every soul will test of death. Mm. Now, uh, basically, funeral as a funeral director, what we do is when the time of death, the family is uh, emotionally they are mm. affected, and uh, they need somebody to organize the burial, yes, the funeral prayers, mm. like janaza. And there are other, uh, in this country, there are other uh, work involved as well, like there's, uh, there, there are uh, the death certificates to be organized, yeah. there are doctors to be consulted, mm. and there are different kind of death happens, you mm -hmm. know, like there are sudden death, there mm. are people die of uh, terminal disease, yes. you know, for cancer, for mm. a long-term disease. So. Uh, different death has a different uh, role to play, different yes. ways to do, to mm. handle it. Mm. So be before we go into the deaths, um, you know, wh when someone passes away in uh, countries where maybe our fathers are from, uh, you know, or the country of our births, uh, whether that's Asia or Africa or wherever in the, uh, in the world, um, j just from my personal experience, it seems that the community is already equipped uh, with what to do and there's uh, I don't know if there's a very specific job title as a funeral director uh, you know as in, mm. in Southeast Asia or in African country uh, or, or in a third world country mm. uh, what they do is slightly different because yes. uh, they there are many countries as far as I know don't have any uh, paperwork to mm -mm. paperwork means uh, any death certificate to collect and, and a burial certificate to collect from mm. the, the registrar. Um, they, as soon as somebody dies, they immediately organize the, uh, the burial. Mm. And most of the time, uh, uh, from my experience, what I've seen in, in those countries, they don't need any post-mortem unless somebody uh, committed suicide mm. or some accidental death yes. or there's a murder case. Mm. Um, that certificate is not an important issue yes. for them. Yeah. The burial is the most important. Mm -hmm. So they quickly uh, jump into the burial site. Yes. They will just uh, organize the burial, mm. funeral uh, uh, prayers, mm. janaza prayers, and just do the simple mm. way. Yeah. Which uh, in the West or in this country, we don't follow that. There are systems to follow. Mm. You need to contact the funeral director mm. and undertakers. And the undertakers, and at the same time, you have uh, you have to contact the uh, uh, obviously the doctors if if the death happens in the hospital. Yes. Doctors, nurses are involved. Mm. 
in some cases there are um, coroners involved if there is uh, uh, an unknown uh, people die of different different yeah. things so uh, in in the case of unexpected death unexpected or su death, sudden yeah. death and the cause of death mm. is very important to establish so without the cause of death uh, the doctors will not certify the death certificate okay the coroner has to do the autopsy mm -hmm. so all these work is involved yes. which takes time mm. it could take one day two days it could take as long as one week and yes. in some cases if there are suspicious death mm. could take even longer because then the police gets involved and then uh, it, it you know they open up an inquest and uh, then uh, it will be decided uh, you know the cause of death yes. and there are some investigation going on maybe mm. so it can take uh, you know a longer but yeah. normally within a day or two uh, somebody can be buried if yes. there is a straightforward death and the cause of death is established okay so um th this would only happen when the cause of death is established and is straightforward by that do you mean that the medical history is known and that the, the uh, well let's put it this way yeah. if uh, somebody dies uh, in hospital yes and they have been there more than 24 hours yes then most of the time we see that the coroner's uh, the autopsy is not required mm. because then the hospital doctors were treating the person mm. so they know the cause of death yes so the doctor will uh, certify the death and the cause of death. Then uh, it gets to the, the information uh, 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 email or, or, or sent to the registrar and mm. the council where, where the death and the birth registry office. Um, then the registrar will issue the burial certificate, which is very important for a funeral director or undertaker to have it yes. in order to collect the deceased mm. from the mortuary okay. or wherever the, the, the deceased uh, are kept mm. and uh, to carry on the uh, burial. Yes. Burial process. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's, it sounds like the, the most imp the key aspect is that the doctor is the one who has to sign off. And when there is a correct me if I'm uh, uh, if I did not understand properly, but uh, if the in the case of a sudden death or unexpected death, where the doctor is uh, not sure yeah. of the cause of death. That is when uh, things can take a bit longer with a post mortem right. examination. If the doctor says that, well, I'm not sure, you know, the mm. cause of death, so he is not ready to um, sign off the uh, death certificate yes. from the hospital. Then obviously they have to get the uh, coroner involved. Mm. So the coroner will come. Then there's a different process. Then the coroner will arrange the autopsy, yes. the post mortem. Mm. Then when, once the coroner receives the report from the pathologist who does the, the autopsy, then they will declare the cause of death. Yes. Then they will prepare the report mm. and will be sent to a uh, registrar mm. for the burial certificate and the death certificate. Yes. Um, and as death is a very emotionally heavy time, and uh, especially with a large family and support circle. Uh, you know, I, I've seen from my own experience that uh, emotions can run high, uh, opinions and uh, suggestions can be coming from all corners. And when it comes to the issue of uh, the post-mortem examination, uh, some people become very heated over this, uh, perhaps because they are unaware yes. that this is something that uh, must happen. Mm -hmm. uh, in your experience, um, how often is the Muslim community um, not ready for this uh, process? Well, the Muslim community actually don't accept the, mm. the, the concept of uh, post-mortem mm. or autopsy because there are lots of cuts in investigation, of you mm -hmm. know. So, uh, there, there is a new system now which has been introduced by the government. Mm. Uh, it's running from about four or five years' time now. Yes. 
and it's quite successful, and that is called MRI scan. Mm. Uh, there are only two or three hospitals are doing in London. Yes. Uh, maybe there are more in uh, outside London, mm. which is the uh, John Ratcliffe Hospital in Oxford mm. and the Whittington Hospital in North London. Mm. And uh, you have a choice now. The family has a choice mm. if they are not willing to go through the post-mortem, yes. they can always notify the uh, coroner mm. and stop that post-mortem happening mm. and they can say that, look, uh, we don't want this. In that case, there is a small fee to be paid as well because it's done privately mm. at the moment and uh, maybe in the near future it will be available on NH NHS as well if it's, mm. uh, it's successful. Um, at the moment, privately it can be done and we have done quite a few like that. Um, then the, um, the process is to obviously uh, take the, the disease to the, 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 these two uh, hospitals, mm -hmm. either of them, and uh, they will do the MRI scan. Yes. And the MRI scan will show the cause of death. Mm. Then the doctor who is doing the MRI also a, a qualified pathologist yes will uh, will know the cause of death mm. but then there is no hundred percent guarantee okay it can still be uh, you know you can still go back to the the, um, uh, the regular coroner regular coroner yeah. and do the uh, post-mortem mm. but 95 percent time Mm. We've seen that, yes, it's successful and uh, the cause of death is established after the mm. MRI scan. So then uh, there is no question of post-mortem or, or uh, you know, investigation mm. of the body pathologist. So do you think to make this service a little bit more available to different regions, the communities, the Muslim communities in different areas should be more actively talking? To uh, the health not service. only Muslim community, mm. even the non-Muslim will be also very mm. happy if this service, mm. MRI scan, is available on yes. NHS. Um, that will make every family happy, mm. really. Yeah, because it's uh, to 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 the family, it's like uh, you are torturing <laughs> the the dead person. Mm. Uh, because they, this uh, post-mortem involves lots mm. of, you know, it's like, you know, when you have an operation, yes. you know, lots of cuts and, you know, uh, investigation, mm. you know, bodily required, physically. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, uh, which uh, is, in MRI scan, you know, it, it mm. doesn't happen. Yeah. You just scan the body mm. and then you know the cause of death and that's it. Mm. So, it's very simple, mm. very easy and uh, it will make uh, Muslim mm. and non-Muslim happy as well if it's available mm. in, uh, in uh, NHS. Mm. Uh, khair, I actually uh, wasn't uh, too aware of this and um, it sounds like something that uh, uh, the communities should um, speak to uh, the community leaders to, to uh, speak to the right leaders leader. to put yeah. pressure on the so, uh, NHS mm. and mm. to the government, uh, you know, uh, mm. local MPs okay. and all that and discuss mm. it and, and take it further. Yes. So we have a phone call uh, from one of the viewers. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yeah, yes. I, uh, I like to talk about the, the after death, mm. there is a life. Exactly like we are in the yard, mm. seven times beautiful is a heaven. I said to God, I said to Quran Majid. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Jazakallah Khair for that comment. Um, are you still on the line? No, okay, sorry. No, there was no question really. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jazakallah Khair for that, um, uh, for, for that comment. Um, but to summarize, uh, it's uh, you know it's it's a it's a requirement by law, yes. and uh, we we can only do uh, and push as much as we can, yes. and um, uh, we we have another caller uh, for us. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I 
Yes, um, uh, they, they, I understand what you're okay. saying. The, in the t time of death, mm. they have to contact the, um, they have to mention to the doctor if okay. it's in the hospital mm. or the, the death happens at home mm. or wherever. They have to mention to the doctor the, when the ambulance comes or the coroner comes that they do not wish to go through the uh, post-mortem. Okay. Now, uh, in the case of post-mortem, they can just mention that uh, we, we, do not, we do not wish to go through the post-mortem. Mm. We want the MRI scan instead. So, um, in which case, uh, coroner will accept that. They will say, okay, we'll organize that, mm. but uh, you have to pay a fees, and they will let them know. The fee is normally between uh, 800 to 1,000 pounds. That is with the uh, transportation okay, and yes. the cost of the MRI because mm. it's done privately. Mm. And the funeral director will organize that, mm. or you can mention to funeral director at the same time. And uh, it is an alternative that you have a choice. You yes. don't have to accept the post-mortem mm -hmm. or autopsy. Yes. You can go for MRI. So it is your choice. Okay. The government has given you the choice. Mm. That's, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. And um, as you mentioned, um, there's a bit of paperwork to do. Once the, uh, the doctor has signed the death certificate, mm. then as I understand it, you have to go to the local town hall to register. Yes. And then they give you the burial form. Yes. And uh, this is where the yeah, funeral the normal, director yeah. can take over from. Yeah, yeah. on normal death, what mm. happens is, you know, uh, uh, the, if you are in the hospital, yes. uh, the doctors are involved, nurses mm. involved. They will um, do the death certificate. Yes. Supposing there is no uh, uh, post mortem involved. Yes. They will do the death certificate. Mm. And this will be sent by bereavement office, uh, which is again the doctors, nurses, they work with the bereavement office. Okay. Uh, they, they will send this information over to the local town hall, mm. the registry office, where yes. the registrar uh, are doing the birth and a death mm. uh, registry. And uh, the family has to contact the registrar. Mm. Do they have to book an appointment or? Well, because of the COVID-19 situation mm. now, there is no face-to-face -face appointment given. Okay. So you need to, you can ring them mm. and uh, give them the details over the phone. Mm. And then the registrar will ask the family member or next of kin, whoever the caller is, mm. that um, who is your funeral director or undertaker. Okay. Then they have to provide the name of the funeral directors. The undertakers okay. who will be arranging mm. the funeral. Mm. Uh, they then the registrar will send this burial certificate direct to email it to the funeral director, okay. the undertaker. So this so is it's all done over the phone yeah. and by email. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is no physical face-to-face -face appointment. Okay. This is only because the COVID time. Mm. Before COVID time, people used to actually make appointment and go and see the register yes. and take the death certificate mm. and the burial certificate at the same time. Okay. Yeah. And so it will be at this point that it's, it's very important to contact a Muslim funeral director. Yes. Yeah. When the death happens, mm. uh, you, you immediately call a Muslim funeral director. Okay. And uh, so that the funeral director is on standby. Mm for uh, the collection of the deceased mm. and uh, preparation like washing, Muslim wash and shrouding mm. and then uh, organizing the janaza and or, um, uh, organizing the, uh, the burial site, the yes. grave mm. uh, to be, uh, to be mm. prepared as well. Yes. So he will contact the cemetery mm. uh, of family's choices, yes. you know, yeah. there are different cemeteries, mm. you know, you have choices, the family has mm. choices. And uh, therefore they, ne they need a funeral director, you know, to, to yes. be contacted immediately at the mm. same time, yes. Uh, would, it, um, would cemeteries also help in arranging funeral directors? Uh, yes, uh, nowadays uh, there are families they call the funeral director mm. and then they call the cemetery as well yes wherever they want to bury mm -hmm. their loved one now uh, which is it's not important to 
call the cemetery. You can call the cemetery as well yes. to get some information mm -hmm. where the cemetery is. If you are, if you don't know uh, the location of the cemetery, or you just know the name. Yes, you know, but nobody visits the cemetery mm -hmm. unless somebody died, mm -hmm. or you know, you go for somebody's funeral. Um, so some families they will contact the cemetery and they want to know, oh, mm -hmm. is it a nice grave, you know, or is it a nice location, or whereabouts it yeah. is, you know, where our you know, this family member uh, that died, what are you going to bury, you know, or can I come and see the grave, mm -hmm. you know, so all these kind of questions they, you know, they, yeah. they like to ask the cemetery. So mm -hmm. sometimes they call the cemetery manager to, uh, to verify all yes. this. Um, sometimes they don't, they just mm. leave it to the funeral director and it mm. is funeral director's job to okay. organize everything, yeah. including the grave. I asked the question because I would assume that, especially at this time, uh, um, many, many people may not know who to call exactly. Yes. And um, as I understand it, in if a person passes away in the hospital, there is even the service where they can request uh, an imam from the hospital itself. And um, I've known that the imams they tend to connect with the funeral directors. Yes, uh, yeah. from the there hospital. are usually mm. uh, imams uh, in the every hospital has a chaplain, mm. and uh, the prayer mm. uh, area, uh, multi faith prayer yes. area they call it. Uh, every hospital has even mm. the airports. You know, many places, mm. uh, public places, has this multi faith prayer uh, arrangement, so hospital also has it, and there is always uh, uh, an imam there, yeah. and uh, they can go to that imam and take some advice, mm. and that imam is well connected with the funeral undertakers, mm. Muslim funeral directors yes. as well, so they can guide them. Mm. So it sounds like there's uh, help. Uh, pretty there much is everyone. help there. And of course, um, with, with large families, usually someone within the family uh, already know, knows someone, as is usually the case with, with large uh, families and support groups. Yeah. Okay. So um, we, when it comes to cemeteries, mm. um, there are some people choose to bury in the UK, some people choose to bury abroad. Um, in your experience, um, yes. obviously, as, as Muslims, we understand that uh, because we uh, intend uh, the quickest burial possible, yes. uh, and we are also told in the Quran that uh, this is one of the knowledge that uh, we don't know, uh, that we want to be buried uh, there and then on the land that we are at. That's right. And Islamically, so uh, we'll the person, yeah. And I just wanted to uh, see your opinion on, on the matter. Well, mm. uh, when the person dies, mm. it is Islamically, it is advisable that the person should be buried within 24 hours mm. the, in the land that he died. Mm. So it should happen wherever he died. Yes. But there are we have seen there are people coming from third world country or even you know from the middle eastern countries as mm -hmm. well we have seen uh, they would like to send the uh, the, the deceased to to their homeland yes mm. there is no benefit to it mm. it is just an emotional act really mm. uh, they like to bury their loved one in their reserved mm. graveyard, you know, in the back home they have, everybody has like a reserve yes. with their own choice. Mm. Uh, and uh, also some of the family members are still living in, in abroad yeah. where they came mm. from. Mm. So these are the number of reasons that they would like to send the body, the, we should not say body, the deceased, mm. yes. to, to uh, abroad. Mm. But there is no importance to that. Yes. There is no ajr, there is no sawab to, you know, a, a, a extra, mm. uh, you know, facility or yes. any, anything really. You don't get anything mm. out of it. It's just an emotional act. It uh, sounds like it's more for the benefit of the living it's than, benefit the, of the, bene living, really, than yes. the benefit of the actual uh, deceased person. No, it's in fact it's more uh, more of a delaying and torture for the 
for the uh, disease to be caused. Tortured in a way that when we repatriate mm. the deceased mm. abroad, there are so certain uh, regulations that mm. we need to follow. Uh, the one of the most important thing is that we need to uh, get an embalming doctor, yes. a qualified person, uh, a medical expert, mm. who does the embalming. Now you have to obviously Google it and mm. see what embalming means. Embalming means, uh, I will just briefly explain, is that the body need to be... Uh, I think is, is that the chemical preservation? Yes, yeah. It mm. needs to be chemically treated mm. and the blood needs to be uh, drained out mm. of the body. And uh, there are, it's like a post-mortem again. Yes, subhanAllah. Yeah. yeah, because I've seen it, how mm. they do it, and it's like a post-mortem again. Um, so it is a kind of torturing to the, to the deceased mm. again. And then it needs to go in a special cargo coffin box, which mm. we call it a zinc line box. It's got an aluminium frame inside with a see-through, uh, just to, to verify the face yes. for, the, um, for the immigration. Mm. And it has to be sealed. And then uh, there are uh, a special certificate has to be taken from the coroner's court, mm. which is called out of England certificate. Yes. Um, and uh, certificate from the uh, embalming mm. expert, mm. doctor. And also infection-free certificate from yes. the hospital. So there are a lot of paperwork mm -hmm. involved, a lot of uh, things involved in it before you actually uh, send the body. And so then you have to hand it over to the, uh, to the uh, cargo um, officials in uh, whichever airport yeah. is involved. SubhanAllah, it's, it sounds quite, um, the, actually, um, you know, you've actually opened up my eyes a little bit more to, to this. Mm. Um, and I was already quite familiar with the process, but I didn't know it was uh, actually this lengthy and this... Yes, uh, it, it, it can take quite effect, a few days yeah. because then you have mm. to also wait mm. for the mm. flight to be yeah. available. And so then, and then when it comes to the burials within the UK, uh, we also have the option of... Uh, option of 24 hours? Of, uh, yeah. And, uh, 48 hours, mm. yeah, depending on mm. paperwork. But most cases, yeah, like if somebody mm. died at night, uh, you know, mm. and, uh, and in the morning, uh, the paperwork... We, uh, we have a phone call. Okay. Uh, okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My dad mm. dead. I sent his dead body, no postmortem. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, we lost the call, but uh, you see, uh, I think the question may have been that... Uh, I think he, he was trying to say that uh, his father died and he didn't have to do the post-mortem, yes. which is okay. Mm. But you still have to go through the embalming mm. yes. process, which is like a post-mortem. Mm. Okay. It's, it's a similar kind of mm. thing because the body needs to be uh, chemically treated with the, the, the formalin, they call it, mm. I think, yeah. And uh, also uh, they drain out the blood. Yeah. And these are the process I have seen. Mm. Okay, subhanAllah. And um, so w with burial within the UK, we have uh, Muslim cemeteries and uh, the more general uh, cemeteries. Mm. Um, when it comes to the general cemeteries, uh, I'm, I'm not too familiar, but uh, as I understand, there's private and local authority cemeteries. Um, is there a separate Muslim section within this, or uh, would you just simply recommend always to go to a Muslim uh, cemetery? For no, the there are every mm. borough, every yes. council, they have their uh, uh, cemetery mm. in every, every area. Yes. There are cemeteries, mm. which is a mixed cemetery. Mm. Mix means uh, Muslim, non-Muslim, mm. you can bury uh, anybody there. But in those cemeteries, they have a Muslim section. Okay. So one section mm. of it is only allocated for Muslim people. Mm. Uh, so this is a mixed one. Mm. Uh, family has a choice. Yes. They can go to those ones, mm. a mixed one. But most Muslim uh, families, they prefer exclusive Muslim uh, cemetery. Mm. Now, exclusive Muslim cemetery is very few. Yes. It's not, not many in, in, in London. Mm. Outside London, there are a few. 
But in London, there's a Garden of Peace. is is the only only uh, largest one mm. in in Hainault near Ilford. I'm sure many Muslims they know it. Um, the others are all mixed, mm. basically. You know where they have. When I say mixed, there is a section uh, allocated for Muslim okay. barrier. So just to be clear, mixed does not mean Muslim, non-Muslim mixed to each no. other. No, just, just some people when they yeah, when they mm. they are told that uh, there is a mixed uh, barrier, mm -hmm. it it's not that you are next to non-Muslim. Yes, it is uh, one whole section allocated, mm. one whole area is allocated. Yes, uh, sometimes with the the boundary wall, mm. or sometimes with the fencing, or some you know the road mm -hmm. uh, to separate the. Muslim burial mm. site, and uh, you you bury the person there yes. next to another Muslim uh, brother or sisters or, or, okay. or child. Jazakallah khair for that clarification. And when it comes to um, the the deceased people, as as we know, uh, you mentioned right at the, big, the beginning, um, the Quran ayah kulu nafsin da iqatul maut, that uh, every soul shall taste death. Yes. Um, and death, it is the one inevitable in life. That is something that uh, whether you're Muslim, non-Muslim, religious, irreligious, uh, it is something that we can't avoid. It is the one fact that we all know. And we all uh, also know that death does not come at an appointed time. And so in your experience, um, just wanted some reflection on, on, on the age of death because um, as I understand it, uh, as Muslims, we are encouraged to visit the cemetery. Uh, even make uh, the, the, the dua to enter the cemetery is to uh, to it is a greetings to the dwellers of the grave. Yeah. And very importantly, it is a way to reflect on our own mortality and our own uh, connection with Allah mm -hmm. Subhanahu Wa Taala. Mm -hmm. And so, in terms of death, is it, um, is it always the case where you uh, end up uh, dealing with people of uh, old, uh, old age no, uh, when the deceased is um, like uh, you say the mm. the death can come to any age mm. that does not have mm. age or time yes it can happen middle of the night it can mm. happen early morning hours it can happen any time of the day mm. and it can happen to anyone yes you know there are people like him sitting here, I can have a heart attack and I can die now. Mm. So it can come anywhere, anytime. Mm. So we have to be prepared for that. Um, yes, the old age people, when they are at their old age, there are a lot of health issues and complications. And yes, when you get to 70, 80 or even beyond, then there is more vulnerability, there is more, uh, you know, uh, chance of dying soon. Mm. One can expect that, okay, you know, maybe not very long to go. Yes. But that is just, Allah knows the best. Mm. Yeah, it can happen any time. Uh, we've seen the deaths happening to one-year-old child. Mm. Even we buried a stillborn, mm. which is... Um, you know, like a miscarriage, yes. or the, even the, the before the, the child was born in mm. mother's womb, uh, the babies died. So it can happen anytime, anywhere, in uh, any age. Yes, any age. Mm. I just see um, people my age, um, perhaps myself included, we sometimes uh, assume that we will live to a, such a, a, a lengthy. Uh, life um, and uh, in your experience, um, how often is that uh, that uh, we you have young people, let's say uh, under the age of forty, even uh, that uh, you you have to um, uh, arrange their funerals? Uh, under forties, it's very difficult to say. Really, mm. you know, there are many deaths yeah, yeah. we have handled under forties, mm. under thirties, under twenties. Uh, the, the more death happens, uh, you know, the, from the elderly age. Mm. But then, yes, there are many, many deaths has taken place under forties, yes. under thirties, and uh, you know, it's just mm. uh, one should not be scared of, you know. 
that even if he's mm. under 40 or under 30. Yeah, subhanAllah. And um, uh, you, you mentioned earlier when it comes to the uh, uh, the post-mortem and requesting an MRI, as it is private, there is a cost. Uh, but um, are there other costs uh, surrounding the burial? Uh, mm. Well, there is. this is only for the MRI that mm. I mentioned there is a cost involved. Yes. Uh, okay. But um, the burial cost mm. is is different, obviously. You have to buy the the, uh, mm. the grave from the cemetery. Yes. Um, can I just pause this answer? We have a phone call. Okay. Okay. Salam alaikum rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. Mm. By I mean, after the guest of the Muslim, the dead body Bangladesh or Nitya or post mortem na koraiya, ye mara ji koraiya na wajo sab bola chali. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, it yes. It is possible. Yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah. it's possible, yes. You just have to refuse mm. the post-mortem, ask the coroner to uh, organize the mm. uh, MRI, mm. but you, you still require to do the embalming. Yes. Because that is a, a different uh, so, subject, different issue. So, so even though the post-mortem uh, can be replaced with an MRI uh, post-mortem, there is still the embalming uh, where the um, the, the, the Im 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 Imbama uh, yeah. treats c the the deceased chemically, and this is just as uh, as part of the mm. process. It's, it has yes. to be done. And so, um, scholars, they they uh, what do they say on this process? Do they uh, in uh, allow well, it? Or? Uh, from the scholars' point of view, mm. uh, they the disease should not be taken to mm. abroad. Put it this way. Yes. And that's full stop. Mm. If you send it, then you have to go through this process. Mm. Okay, so even though that the uh, the post mortem may be replaced with an MRI, there is still the issue of embalming, em embalming which is very, uh, uh, I think, torturous to the uh, Obviously, yes, yes. yes. You know, there are mm. uh, some cuts and, you mm. know, some process of injecting the. Uh, the, the fluid, the chemical, okay. and uh, mm. the suction mm. they used uh, for um, taking the, the, the blood out mm. uh, from the body. Mm. So all this process is involved. Yes. yes. Okay. So it is a kind of post-mortem. Okay. So though it's not a post-mortem, it is a kind of post-mortem. Kind of. And bear in mind that this is something that uh, scholars uh, discourage it's due to uh, all these factors. Um, I wanted to ask the l lessons that you've learnt um, mm -hmm. over your almost two decades uh, of this, uh, of, 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 of uh, serving the community in this manner. Uh, is, is there any um, thing that you can share uh, with us so that we can take away? Uh, <laughs> well, there are a lot of things, really, but very briefly that from my experience, especially uh, what I can share is the last March and April when the COVID-19 mm. was uh, very, very high and uh, we were in a lockdown situation for mm. five months. Every funeral undertaker was very, very busy, so we were. I was uh, doing the burial of four, five, you know, in some days even six. SubhanAllah. And, uh, there was not much facilities available mm. uh, initially. Uh, when I say facilities, like we needed uh, PPE supply, and which was very short supply at that mm. time, you know, like mask and, and uh, gloves and, you know, the sanitizers mm. and all these things. And uh, then later, when everybody was struggling, basically, yes. we were just somehow managing it. Uh, we were not prepared for that. So what I can share today is that in future, if we have a situation like that, mm. we should be prepared for that. Mm. You know, so we should ask the government, ask the local authority to have these facilities. Yes. Also the volunteers, mm. you know, because when you are locked down situation, everybody's at home mm. and everyone was scared because this is a very deadly virus. Mm. So nobody wants to take chance, you know. Yes. So 
you can't really force people to come out mm. and help in the funeral, you know, mm. uh, service, mm. you know, to to bury a COVID-19 deceased. Yes. You know, so it was a bit of a struggle for every funeral directors, every undertakers, mm. Muslim, non-Muslim. Um, so we need to have some kind of facility yes. that we can push forward to the government. Okay. And uh, with the uh, COVID-19 and the lockdown and the crowds being uh, controlled, uh, be, uh, do you know what the maximum number uh, that is in, uh, in a crowd in, is? In the five months of uh, lockdown situation mm. earlier in April, we, uh, the government only allowed five family members mm. with the distancing two meters mm. to attend the funeral prayers. Mm. And no mosque was uh, doing anything because mosque and all the places of worship was yes. actually closed mm. down. Yes. So the funeral prayers were taking place in the cemetery, mm. and only five family members were okay. allowed. What about the current uh, regulations? The current situation mm. now is a little bit better. Mm -hmm. There are 30 people, mm. uh, the government has increased it mm. to 30 family members with the two meters distancing, mm. can attend the funeral uh, prayers. Mm but they have to be away from the uh the when the on the time of the burial taking place yes. the ground officers that that do the the burial mm. will organize everything mm. maybe the funeral director will be allowed there mm. uh, the family members has to be uh, away from the grave grave okay. site yes until the burial is finished mm. then they are given chance to come and say their okay. prayers uh, one by yeah. one so there is a system yeah. to follow there and uh, as it is a very sensitive time for the family um, and large families uh, may have more than 30 people that want to attend mm. um, and how important is it that they uh, abide it's a very understandable time it is a very sad and time uh, time of mourning but uh, with the government regulations um, w what advice can you say to those with the large families it's very difficult the mm. large family uh, obviously we many families there they are really large families especially mm. in the time of death you know the first cousin second cousin third cousin the, the whole you know everybody comes at the time of the death they all want to you know uh, view the person mm. or or attend the funeral prayers everybody wants to jo join mm. and also there is uh, a reward Mm. Uh, involved uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you attend the funeral prayer. Mm. So everybody wants to uh, join. Mm. But in this time of pandemic, this time of crisis, uh, one has to understand there is, you know, the, the government has a ruling that mm. more than 30 people. So the family has to choose mm. uh, the most immediate family members. Mm next of kin and the first cousin, second cousin. It's, it's their choice who to bring. But uh, it's a time of understanding, really. They have mm. to understand that no more than 30 people are allowed. I mean, there are times we get pressurized that, oh, can we bring another five? Or can I bring another 10, you yeah. know? But it's very difficult. It's hard for, for undertakers mm. to, even the cemetery workers, to uh, you know, fulfill this request, mm. it's very difficult because uh, then there are, uh, you know, the government ruling if you are not following the, the system, mm. uh, then uh, you could be fined. You okay. know, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's not mm. really uh, something that we should be practicing. Yeah. We must uh, you know follow the rules of the the, the have been given. Okay, Jazakallah Khair for all the information that, that you've given. Jazakallah Khair uh, Kafil from um, uh, Al Albir Islamic Trust. Al Albir Islamic Trust. Uh, for taking your time out and speaking uh, about the funeral arrangements, uh, especially the post mortem and uh, you know the, the COVID uh, situation. And uh, every topic that we discussed, we could have uh, spoken an entire uh, hour on, on oh, that yes, topic uh, alone, to uh, and e even longer. But uh, unfortunately, uh, due to time limitations, we couldn't. So, Jazakum um, khairan for everyone uh, watching. Uh, hopefully, uh, we've all learned something new uh, and uh, about funeral arrangements and the importance to uh, of of taking care of the deceased. 
Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have uh, mercy upon those who have uh, passed away uh, and, and forgive them their sins and enter them into uh, Jannah al mm -hmm. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us during these uh, very um, uh, harsh and uh, hard times. And uh, join us uh, next week, insha'Allah, uh, on uh, ION TV at uh, Saturday from 3 to 4 with our guest uh, on, on being Muslim. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.